General Gothos, inspect the canal. <laughs> All right, Mr. President. We go to Panama. Bully! <laughs> Bully! You'll need this. It's down south, you know. Well, bon voyage. <laughs> <laughs> Aunt Abby, I must correct your misapprehension. You spoke of our hotel. We have no hotel. Came directly Well, there here. is a very nice little hotel, just three blocks Aunt down. Martha, this is my home. Then you can't stay here. We need our rooms. You need them. Yes, for our lodgers. There are lodgers in this house? Well, not now, but we were planning to have some. Then my old room is still free. But there's no room for Dr. Einstein. Well, share the room with me. No, Jonathan, I'm afraid you can't stay here. Dr. Einstein and I need a place to sleep. You remember this afternoon that as a boy I could be disagreeable. Well, I mean, maybe just for tonight. Well, just for tonight. That's settled. Now, if you'll get my room ready. It only needs airing out. We keep it ready to show our lodger. I'm sure he'll. Dr. Einstein will find it comfortable. You're the most distinguished guest in Dr. Einstein. I'm afraid you don't fully appreciate his skill. You will. In a few weeks, you'll see me looking like a very different Jonathan. He can't operate on you here. Once we get organized, once we resume practice. Oh, I forgot to tell you. We're turning Grandfather's old laboratory into an operating room. We expect to be quite busy. Jonathan, we will not let you turn this house into a hospital. A hospital? Heavens no. It will be a beauty parlor. Hey, Tony, down in the cellar. <laughs> Dr. Einstein, your aunts have invited us to live with them. Oh, to fix it? Just for tonight. Please get our room ready immediately. Well, for tonight. <laughs> Yes. You mean 
A state secret? Yes, a state secret. <laughs> Promise? <clears throat> you have the word of the President of the United States. Cross my heart and hope to die. Now, how are we going to keep it a secret? Well, Teddy, you go downstairs, and when I turn out the lights, it's all talk. You come back up and bring the poor man down to the canal. Now, go along, Teddy. And then we'll come down later and hold services. You may announce the President will say a few words. Where is the poor devil? He's in the window seat. It seems to be spreading. <laughs> We've never had yellow fever there before. <laughs> Oh, but when John and Einstein come back, let's see if we can get them to go to bed right away. Oh, yes, while they're asleep, we can get dressed and they'll be ready for the services. Oh, have you noticed? I've never even seen Mr. Hoskins. Oh, my goodness, that's right. You were out. Well, you just come over and see him now. He's really quite good looking. Let's sit here some evidence. Woo! <laughs> we're bringing the luggage through here. Jonathan, you can go right up. Your room's waiting for you. I'm afraid we don't keep Brooklyn hours, but you two can run along to bed. Now, you must be very tired, both of you, and we don't go to bed this early. Well, you should. It's about time I came home to take care of you. Well, we weren't planning to go to bed. And Martha, did you hear me say go to bed? <laughs> the instrument case can go to the laboratory in the morning. Huh. Now then, we're all going to bed. I'll wait till you're up and turn out the lights. Another flight, Doctor. What a long and tomorrow. <laughs> all right, Aunt Abby. Right up. Now, Aunt Abby, turn out the lights. Who's <laughs> that? 
see Miss Abby and Miss Bertha. Doctor, turn on the lights. It was rather an untimely moment for a social call. I think you better explain what you're doing here. We happen to live here. You don't live here. I'm in this house every day and I've never seen you before. Where's Miss Abby and Miss Martha? What have you done with them? Perhaps we'd better introduce ourselves. This is Dr. Einstein. Dr. Einstein? A surgeon of great distinction. Somewhat of a magician. <laughs> and I suppose you're going to tell me you're Boris Carlyle. I'm Jonathan Brewster. <laughs> oh, you're Jonathan. I see you've heard of me. Yes, just this afternoon for the first time. And what did they say about me? Just that there was another brother named Jonathan. That's all that was said. Well, that explains everything now that I know who you are. I'll be running along. So kindly unlock the door. That explains everything. Just what did you mean by that? And why did you come here at this time of night? I thought I saw someone prowling around the house. I suppose it was you. You saw someone prowling around the house? Yes. Weren't you outside? Isn't that your car? You saw someone at the car? Yes. What else did you see? There's someone walking around the house with a car. What else did you see? Just that! That's all! That's why I came over here. I wanted to tell Miss Abby to call the police. But if that was you and that's your car, I don't need to bother Miss Abby. I'll be running along. What was the man doing at the car? I don't know. You see, I was on my way over here. I think you're lying. I think she tells the truth, Johnny. Let her go now, eh? I think she's lying. Breaking into a house this time of night. I think she's dangerous. She shouldn't be allowed around loose. Get your hands off me! Doctor. Let go of me! Let go of me! Quiet. Help! Help! Miss Abby! Miss Abby! Miss Abby! Please help me! Help me! Help me! Get your hands off me! Get your hands off me! It's going to be a private funeral. <laughs> Alright. 
two guys. What? The first thing in the morning? Out. Where are they sleeping? Wait, let them in Jonathan's old room. It's my old room. I'm sleeping, Edward. I'm here to stay. Oh, Lord, I'm so glad. Johnny, do you sleep down here? You bet your life you sleep down here. You sleep on the sofa, and I sleep on the window seat. Oh! <laughs> the window seat. Oh, well, what's that? Are you bad, doctor? That window seat's good enough for me tonight. I'll sleep on the window seat. No, Johnny. All this argument makes me think of Mr. Spanalzo. Spanalzo! Mortimer! It really isn't necessary to inconvenience you like this. We'll sleep down here. <laughs> Jonathan, your sudden consideration for me is very unconvincing. Come along, come along, Tony. We get our things out of the room, eh? Don't bother, Doctor. By the way, Doctor, I've completely lost track of Mr. Spinalzo. Who is this Mr. Spinalzo? Just a friend of ours Tony's been looking for. Well, don't bring anyone else in here. <laughs> I'm sorry, Tony. Come along. But we pack, I tell you all about it. Oh, Tomorrow, you don't have to stay down here. I can go in with Mark and you can take mine. It's no trouble at all, Aunt Abby. We'll be packed in a few minutes. And you can have the room, Mortimer. You're just wasting your time! I told you I'm sleeping down here! Mortimer! What is the matter with you, darling? <laughs> I've almost been killed! <laughs> You've almost been? Betty! Martha! <laughs> <laughs> no, it was Jonathan! He mistook our first name. No, it's more than that. He's some kind of maniac, Mortimer. I'm afraid of him. Why, darling. You're trembling. Have you got any smelling salts? Oh, no, but do you think some hot tea or coffee, maybe? Coffee! And make some for me, too. And some sandwiches. I haven't had dinner. <laughs> we'll make something for the both of you. Clark, but we can leave our hats down here now. You weren't going somewhere, were you? Do you know what time it is? It's after 12. 12! <laughs> Elaine, you've got to go home. What? You wanted some sandwiches, didn't you? It won't be a minute. Why, don't you remember? We wanted to celebrate your engagement. <laughs> <laughs> that will do, dear. We'll make a nice supper for you both. And I'll open a bottle of wine. All right. No wine! Mortimer, <laughs> what is going on in this house? <laughs> what do you mean, what's going on in this house? We were supposed to go to dinner and the theater tonight. You called it off. You asked me to marry you. I told you I would, and 15 minutes later you're chasing me out of the house. And just now, tonight, your brother tried to strangle me, and he wants to chase me home. Now listen, Mr. Brewster, before I go, I want you to know where I stand. Do you love me? I love you very much, Elaine. In fact, I love you so much, I can't marry you. Now, wait a minute, you've got to do better than that. <laughs> no, dear. You see, there's a insanity runs in my family. <laughs> it practically gathers. <laughs> That's why I can't marry you. Now, wait a minute, you've got to do even better than that. No, dear. There's a strange taint in the Brewster blood. If you really knew my family, it's, well, it's what you expect if Strindberg had written Hell's a Pop. No, just because Teddy's a little. No, dear. It goes way back to the first person, the, the one who came over on the Mayflower. You know, in those days, the Indians used to scalp the settlers. Well, they used to scalp the Indians. No, Mortimer, that's ancient history. No, the whole family. Take Grandfather. He tried his patent medicines out on dead people to be sure he wouldn't kill them. He wasn't so crazy, he made a million dollars. And then there's Jonathan. You just said he was a maniac. He tried to kill you. But he's your brother, not you. I'm in love with you. Then there's Teddy. You know Teddy? He thinks he's Roosevelt. No, dear, no Brewster should marry. I realize if I met my father in time, I'd have stopped him. 
Now, darling, all this doesn't prove that you're crazy. Look at your aunt. They're roosters, aren't they? And they're the sanest, sweetest people I've ever met. <laughs> well, even they have their peculiarities. Oh, yes, but what lovely peculiarities. Generosity, kindness, human sympathy. There's another one! Oh, of course, sure. there are many others. You can't tell me anything about your aunt. Not going to. Look, Lane, you've got to go home. Something very important has come up. Up from where? We're alone here together. I know I'm acting irrationally, but just put it to the fact that I'm a mad Brewster. If you think you're going to get out of this by pretending you're insane, you're crazy. <laughs> Maybe you're not going to marry me, but I'm going to marry you. I love you, you dope. Well, if you love me, would you get the hell out of here? Well, Lane, you won't be home, won't you? I'm afraid. Pray a little walk through the cemetery. Watch, <laughs> <laughs> Molly. Kiss me goodnight. Of course, darling. <laughs> goodnight, Joe. Call you in a day or two. <laughs> you, you critic. <laughs> and Adam, and Martha, come in here. We'll be in a minute, dear. Come in here now. I thought you promised me not to let anyone in this house while I was gone. Well, Jonathan just walked in. I don't mean Jonathan. I'm Dr. Einstein. I don't mean Dr. Einstein. Who's that in the window seat? We told you, Mr. Hoskins. It is not Mr. Hoskins. Now, who can that be? <laughs> Are you trying to tell me you've never seen this gentleman before? I certainly am. Why, it's in this a fine how do you do? It's getting so anybody thinks he can just walk in here. No, don't get out of it. Don't don't you try to get out of this, Aunt Abby. That is another one of your gentlemen. Mortimer, how could you say such a thing? That man's an imposter. If he thinks he's going to be buried in our cellar, he's mistaken. <laughs> Aunt Abby. You admitted to me you put Mr. Hoskins in the window seat. Yes, I did. Well, this man couldn't have gotten the idea from Mr. Hoskins. <laughs> By the way, where is Mr. Hoskins? Oh, he must have gone to Panama. Oh, they were him? No, not yet. He's just out there waiting for the service. Poor oh, dear. We hadn't had a minute but with Jonathan in the house. Oh, we always wanted to hold a double funeral. <laughs> I will not treat services over a total stranger. A stranger? My dear Aunt Abby, how can I believe you when there are 12 gentlemen in the cellar and you admit you poisoned them? Yes, I did. But you don't think I'd stoop to telling a fib. Martha! <laughs> You and I can't live under the same roof. But you've come to the wrong solution. Take your suitcase and get out! Jonathan! You're beginning to bore me! You've played your one-night stand in Brooklyn. Move on! My dear Mortimer, just because you graduated from the back fence to the typewriter don't think you've grown up! I'm staying, and you're leaving. And I mean now! You think I can be frightened? If you think there's anything I fear, I've lived a strange life, Mortimer. But it's taught me one thing: to be afraid of nothing. Martha, let me see what's in the window seat. Oh, no! <laughs> 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 Jonathan, let's have Martha see what's in the window seat. Aunt Abby, 
I owe you an apology. I have very good news for you. Jonathan is leaving. He's taking Dr. Einstein and their cold companion with them. Jonathan, you're my brother. You're a Brewster. I'm giving you this chance to leave Brooklyn and take the evidence with you. You can't ask for more than that. Very well. In that case, I'll have to call the police. <laughs> Don't reach for that telephone. Are you still giving me orders after seeing what's happened to Mr. Spinalzo? Spinalzo? I knew he was a foreigner. <laughs> <laughs> Remember. What happened to Mr. Spinalzo can happen to you, too. Oh, for goodness sake! <laughs> oh, hello, Miss Abby. Oh, Officer O'Hara. Can we do something for you? No, I saw your lights on outside. I thought there might be a sickness in the house. <laughs> You have company. I'm sorry I disturbed you. Oh, no! Come on in! Yes, come right in, Officer O'Hara. This is our nephew, Mortimer. Oh, pleased to meet you. And this is another nephew, Jonathan. Please to <laughs> make your acquaintance. Well, it must be nice having your nephews visiting you. Are they going to be staying with you for a bit? I'm staying. My brother, Jonathan, is just leaving. Hey. I've met you here before, haven't I? I'm afraid not. Jonathan hasn't been home for years. His face looks familiar. Perhaps I've seen a photograph of him somewhere. I don't think so. Oh, yes, Jonathan. I'd hurry if I were you. Your things are all packed anyway, aren't they? Well, if you'll be wanting to say your goodbyes, I'll call my wife. Oh, what's the rush? I like that you stick around until my brother goes. No, oh, I just came to make sure everything was all right. We're going to have coffee in a minute. Won't you join us? Oh, I forgot the coffee. And I'll make some more sandwiches. I ought to know your appetite by this time, Officer O'Hara. Oh, don't bother. I'm, I'm doing ring in in a few minutes. Oh, you can have a cup of coffee with us. My brother will be gone soon. Sit down. <laughs> Say, ain't I see a photograph of your brother someplace? I don't think so. His face certainly reminds me of somebody. Oh, he looks like somebody you've probably seen in the movies. No, I hate the movies. I never go to the movies. My mother says the movies is a bastard art. <laughs> yeah, it's full of them. Oh, your mother said that? Yeah, my mother was an actress. Pardon me, a stage actress. Perhaps you've heard of her. Peaches Latour. <laughs> Sounds like a name I've seen in the program. What'd she play? Well, her big hit was Mutt and Jet. She played it for three years. Me, I was born on tour. The third season. You were? Yep. Sioux City, Iowa. I was born in the dress room at the end of the second act. Oh. And Mother made the finale. <laughs> <laughs> but a trooper. Now, there's a good story in your mother. You know I can write for the theater. You do? Say, you're not Mortimer Brewster the dramatic critic. Yes. Well, I certainly am glad to meet you. Say, Mr. Brewster, you and me, we're in the same line of business. We are? Yeah. I'm a playwright. This, being on the police force, is only temporary. How long have you been on the force? Twelve years. <laughs> I'm collecting material for a play. I'll bet it's a honey. Well, it ought to be. I mean, we call it drama I see as a cop. Mr. Brewster, you have no idea what goes on in Brooklyn. I think I have. <laughs> Say, what time you got? Ten after one. Gee, I gotta ring in. Oh, wait a minute, O'Hara? On that play of yours, I may be able to help you. You would? Well, it was fate my walking in here tonight. I'll tell you the plot. So it opens up in my mother's restroom, where I was born. See, but this time, I'm, all, I'm not born. Oh! You're <laughs> on your way, eh? Good. You haven't shot much time, you know. Well, everything's just about ready. Oh, John, are you leaving? Goodbye. 
Goodbye, Dr. Einstein. Say, doesn't this case belong to you? Uh oh. Yes, Jonathan. You can't go without all of your things. Well, Harry, it was nice meeting you. We'll get together sometime and talk about your play. No, no I'm not leaving just yet, Mr. Brewster. Why not? Well, you just offered to help me with my play, didn't you? I'm not leaving until I tell you the plot. But, Harry, I, I nope. can't do that. I'm not a creative writer. I'll do the creative. You just put words onto it. But, Harry! No, sir, Mr. Brewster. I'm not leaving this house until I tell you the plot. In that case, Mortimer, we'll be running along. Don't try that! You can't go yet. You've got to take all of your things, you know. Look, Harry, you were along that way. My brother's just going. I can wait. I've been waiting 12 years. <sighs> I'm sorry I took so long. Don't bring that in here. Oh, Harold, would you care to join us for a bite in the kitchen? The kitchen? Jonathan's leaving. Oh, well, <laughs> that's nice. Come along, Officer O'Hara. Sure, if you don't mind eating in the kitchen, O'Hara. Then where else would you eat? Well, it's nice to see you again. Goodbye. Glad you came back to Brooklyn, John. Because it gives me a chance to throw you out. And the first first one out is your boyfriend, Mr. Spinell. Say, Mr. Brewster, we can talk in here. Coming right out. <laughs> I should have known you'd grow up to write a play with a policeman. Get going now. All three of you. Doctor, this affair between my brother and I has got to be settled. Not to me. Diva got trouble enough. Your brother gives us a chance to get away. What more could you ask? You don't understand. Now, Tony, let's get going. We're not going. We're going to sleep right here tonight. With a cop in the kitchen and Mr. Spinazzo <coughs> in the window seat. <laughs> That's all he's got on us. We'll take Spinazzo down and dump him in the bay and come right back here. Then, he tries to interfere. Now, Tony. Doctor. You know, once I make up my mind. Ah, when you make up your line, mind, you lose your head. <laughs> Brooklyn ain't a good place for you. Doctor. Okay, we got to stick together. Someday we get stuck together. <laughs> We're coming back here, do we got to take these with us? No, leave them here. Hide them in the cellar. Move fast. Spinalzo can go out the same way he came in. Is this the cellar? No, 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 no! 
We'll go to Kelly's, but you're going to ring it on the way. <laughs> All right, that'll only take a couple of minutes. I'll ditch this one and be back in five minutes. When I return, I expect to find you gone. Wait for me. <laughs> we'll wait for him, Doctor. I've waited a good many years for a chance like this. We got him right where we want him, and he looked guilty. Take the bags up to our room, Doctor. Have they gone? Oh, sorry. We thought we heard somebody leave. <laughs> Just Mortimer, and he'll be back in a few minutes. Is there any food left in the kitchen? I think Dr. Einstein and I would enjoy a bite. But you won't have any time. No, if you're still here when Mortimer gets back, he won't like it. He'll like it. He's got to like it. Get some food for us while we bury Mr. Spinalzo in the cellar. Oh, no! You can't bury him here! No, Jonathan, you've got to take him with you. There's a friend of Mortimer's downstairs waiting for him. A friend of Mortimer's? He and Mr. Spinalzo will get along fine together. They're both dead. They must mean Mr. Hoskins. Mr. Hoskins? Do you know about what's downstairs? Of course we do, and he's no friend of Mortimer's. He's one of our gentlemen. Your gentlemen? And we will not have any strangers buried in our cellar. What, Mr. Hoskins? Mr. Hoskins isn't a stranger, dear. Besides, there's no room for Mr. Spinoza. The cellar is crowded already. <laughs> crowded? With what? There are twelve graves down there. <laughs> twelve graves? At least very little room, and we're going to need it. You, you mean you and Aunt Martha have murdered? Murder? Certainly not. <laughs> it's one of our charities. Why, what we've been doing is a mercy. So you just take your mistress Spinazzo <laughs> out of here. You've done that. Here in this house. And you've buried them down there. Johnny. We've been chased all over the world. They stay right here in Brooklyn and do just as good a job as you do. <laughs> what? You've got 12, and we've got 12. I've got 13. No, 20, 12. 13. There's Mr. Spinazzo, then the first one in London, two in Johannesburg, one in Sydney, one in Melbourne, in San Francisco, one in Phoenix, Arizona. Phoenix? The filling station. Then there's the three in Chicago, and the one in South Bend. That makes 13. But you can't count the one in South Bend. He died of pneumonia. He wouldn't have gotten pneumonia if I hadn't shot him. <laughs> no, Johnny. He died of pneumonia. He don't count. He counts for me. I say 13. <laughs> no, Johnny. You've got 12, and they've got 12. So old ladies are just as good as you are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they are, are they? Well, that's easily taken care of. All I need is one more, that's all. Just one more. <laughs> oh, here I am. <laughs> Oh! <laughs>